I want to show you a new way I'm making my raised beds. Uh, this is how I'm going to start making my raised beds is using uh, blocks or stone or cinder blocks. Uh, because I find them, they're going to be more durable than let's say like this one right here made out of wood and you can see already it is rotting and deteriorating already. In the bottom of the raised bed I've got like a screen or you can put like a screen and what I did was I just got an old radiator, a broken radiator from an automobile and just laid it down there so the water can go out and drain out but uh, this is going to be also gopher and mole proof so the moles and gophers cannot come up from the bottom of the raised bed and start eating uh, the vegetables and roots in the raised bed. This is an old radiator from an automobile and uh, I might take this, the other one that I had didn't have all of this metal here uh, so it was <laughs> fairly easy. I'll flatten this out. It's a little not so flat right now, but I'll flatten it out on the ground. And I might take these off. I'm not sure. But here's an example of an old car radiator that can you use for raised bed. You know, um, the water will go through. Another way you can do it is this is using an old grate from a refrigerator. Uh, again, um, gophers, it's going to have a hard time going through this. And you know, you line on the outside to create a raised bed. Moles possibly can go through this. This is kind of big. Another way you can line the raised bed, as I showed in other videos, is you can use chicken wire or uh, mesh uh, to line the bottom so moles and gophers can't come through. I'm going to fill up the rest of this raised bed with soil and potting soil and then I'll top it off with a uh, higher quality potting soil. Filled it to the top almost with potting soil about an inch from the top I filled it up and now I'm going to put some seeds in and then I'll top it off with higher quality uh, potting soil. I don't do like monocrop seeding. I uh, use various different seeds and this is uh, onions, green onions and uh, all of my seeds I uh, harvested from my garden from uh, last year or prior years. So I just uh, sprinkle it down there. These are daikon. And I, the next one is broccoli seeds. Or I think these might be kale or cruciferous. I've got some of these old white sapote and uh, these might be a little old but uh, these are trees eventually so if it grows here great and I'll just transplant it and then I mend my soil with uh, rock dust this has like 70 different trace 70 to 90 different trace minerals sprinkle it on there and you get more nutritional quality vegetables and fruit when you use rock dust. Also I've got um, insect frass and this is a, a bit higher, a bit better quality compost potting soil. Sorry. Top dress it. It's very important to water 
your seeds uh, after you first plant them. Actually, another good way is to soak the seeds overnight. Uh, I didn't do that, but... Okay, I'm going to put a sprinkler, automatic sprinkler, to this raised bed that I just made. And I'm going to tap it into this holes right here. I'm going to cut a T in. <coughs> I'll just cut it here. In fact, I'll just do it right now. Just got this from a big box store. Less than a dollar. So it's just a compression fit and it locks in place. This is half inch. Bring it over there and cut it to length. All right, so we cut the tube to length, and I've got to put an end cap on here. I can go purchase an end cap, but I like to uh, improvise. I put the clamp on first. Reduce it down a little bit. Get some old rubber tubing from a bicycle and fold it over it and stuff it in here. I have the tube raised up and I put it on uh, some sticks here uh, and here and then now punch, uh, I think I'll put two emitters here down this way. So uh, I'm just going to estimate, you know, maybe right, right around here. So punch a hole right here using this. Okay, you hear that click. And right about here. Next thing we need is these uh, connectors for here for the holes. To these connectors, I'll, I'll put the uh, holes on now. Securely, and then I'll pop the connector in, and then maybe about six inches above, that's where I'll have the admitter. So let's say about that. Okay. We'll do the same for the next admitter. I mean, uh, holes. Touch the holes. Okay. Press it in. And here is where the, I put the hole. And then again about six inches. Here are the emitters that I'm using. 
and again it's very simple just attach it to the end of the hose I'll go turn on the sprinkler and adjustments if we need it. Try to make some adjustments. A couple of things I might do. Spread it more evenly. I want to put the, some stakes in and tape it uh, so it stands more erect. So that's what I'll do right now. Okay, this is about two weeks later. As you can see, it's watering and you can see the results. 